Wright Polk had one clear goal as a child, to be part of a winning team. But as he grew, so too did life's challenges. This was a time when people didn't even talk about mental illness. And if someone had a chemical imbalance of the brain in your family, it was considered a weakness. It's very, uh, to a great degree, it's very devastating. In the eighth grade, the gridiron served as a lonely crossroads of sorts, a turning point for Wright. Well, I got beat up so badly by the opposing guard, it was embarrassing, and I quit. All the football players wouldn't talk to me, cheerleaders wouldn't talk to me, and the coaches wouldn't talk to me. And uh, that was tough. And I told myself that uh, if I ever went out for football again, I would never quit, no matter what. Despite his disability, Wright came back, vowing never to quit anything again. Years went by, and an engineering degree led to a steady job. But in 1998, his brain disorder progressed, leaving him unable to work. Five years later, even walking became difficult for the once agile athlete. But something inside led him to walk here. VSA Arts of Georgia, an organization dedicated to making art accessible to disabled and low-income Georgians. Mr. Wright, as he's known here, found a new team. Every Tuesday, without fail, Wright volunteers at VSA's Arts for All Gallery, the South's only full-time gallery exhibiting work by artists with disabilities. From mailing to maintenance, duties that may seem simple require every bit of strength Wright can summon. Mr. Wright represents exactly why it is we do what we do person with a disability with regular access to artistic experiences who because of that grows as a citizen. We believe that the arts are integral to an experience of full citizenship and that without the experience of the arts you can't really live your life the way that you would for a full life. Even though I didn't know about the arts and not very capable at it. It was being part of an organization where I could learn more about the arts and still do something to contribute. And that's why I go and help them and do whatever I can to help them. Wright's condition allows him to volunteer just one day per week. And even after that, he needs two days to recover. Still, he fights through the pain and discomfort, fulfilling a promise he made to VSA and to himself so many years ago, forged by what Wright considers training for life. Because of uh, my mental challenge, uh, there are several times I just wanted to give up, throw in the towel. But um, because of that training, I will not give up. I will not throw in the towel. Courage, grace. Wright Polk quietly lives out his promise refusing to give up and teaching others what's possible. A calling he is glad to answer in the name of service and his team. When you become part of a team, you become part of something that's greater than you. You become greater than an individual. And 
and that's enough to keep me going back.